we ought to be about uh, the business of putting America uh, back to work. Now, that is the number one issue that our members heard when they went home uh, over the break, uh, a cry out on behalf of the American people to put this country back to work for Congress to cooperate uh, together. We are going to continue to uh, press uh, the uh, super committee, the select committee, on job creation because uh, we believe that uh, job creation equals deficit reduction. And where, what better time than now when we face uh, a severe problem in terms of unemployment and are also looking to bring our deficit down that we know by lowering the unemployment rate that we can drop the deficit as much as 25 percent. We believe that the select committee ought to have the same kind of time constraints and the same kind of trigger as it relates to job creation as it does uh, for deficit reduction. The president made a bold speech last night, but he made a very pragmatic and practical speech as well where he called upon the United States Congress to take action on behalf of the American people. We ought to be able to, as he challenged us, like China has done, to have the kind of infrastructure that will make this nation second to none in terms of its economic superiority and our ability to move commerce across this nation and to put people back to work. Jobs that are ready and ready to go, waiting and ready to go, are something that we need to make our investment in, and whether it's roads or bridges or sewer systems or reacting in the aftermath of the great hurricanes and rains that have plagued the uh, eastern seaboard, the fires of Texas, the storms that have taken place down in south. This is time for us to put America back to work in a compassionate way, but also in a, both in the short term to bolster our security and also in the long term to make sure that this country is the number one preeminent economic leader in the world. It's a time for this Congress to decide whether or not it will just say no and continue to rebuff the President's agenda or stand up and act, not for either party, but for the people of this country that need to go back to work. Now, I'd like to yield to Rick Larson from Washington State, Chairman of the Caucus and representing the New Democrats. Right, Chairman. Right. Chairman. So don't confuse Rick Larson and me with John Larson from uh, Connecticut. Um, we look a little bit, only a little bit different. Um, I'm the tall one with no hair. But I'm Rick Larson, Washington State Second District. I'm also here on behalf of the New Democratic Coalition. I'm the vice chair of the coalition, and um, I'm also the co-chair of their task force on critical infrastructure and manufacturing. This country needs a forward-thinking plan for long-term economic growth that uh, works for the people of this country that invests in Amer uh, the infrastructure and invests in innovation and keeps America ahead of the competition. And I think the President's speech laid out that plan last night. Uh, over the break, um, give you a little quick geography lesson here. My, my district is about as far north and west as you, you can get from Washington, D.C. in the lower 48. I'm up in the northwest corner of Washington State up near the Canadian border. So we are a long way from D.C., and we like it that way. But those folks are saying something very clear. And, and what they're saying can be best expressed in a little placard my wife and I saw um, this summer. It said, um, public notice, due to the downturn in the economy, budget cuts, and the rising cost of oil and gas, the light at the end of the tunnel has been turned off. The, you know, that's what the American people actually think. They actually do think that. And when Congress doesn't act on this jobs plan, they're going to continue to think that because they're going to think there are more people here in Congress who are more interested in keeping that light at the uh, end of the tunnel turned off until after the next election, instead of keeping the light turned on, working for them. And the President's jobs plan that he introduced last night was a message to the American people that we're going to work to keep the light turned on and not wait until the next election. As co-chair of the New Dems Task Force on Critical Infrastructure and Manufacturing, I was especially pleased to see an emphasis on this investment in roads and bridges and highways. Uh, the last point I want to make is that uh, another message from the people um, back home is that what they said generally is that Congress isn't meeting the expectations of the American people. We're not meeting the expectations that they have for how great this country is. And the President's jobs plan and his speech last night was a clear message to Congress 
to act, to act on that jobs plan, but act in order to meet the expectations of the American people. They think this, our country is still great, and they want a Congress that acts that way, and we need to step up. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, as we approach a, a very uh, solemn uh, weekend uh, where we pause and reflect on the events that transpired 10 years ago and what's seared in all of our uh, memories, uh, it's a time for, again, for shared sacrifice and bringing the nation together. I recall very vividly all of us standing on the steps of the Capitol and coming together and putting aside our difference. It's the same kind of uh, crisis with 14 million Americans out of work that we face and the need for us to bring people together in this coming in the midst of uh, proposed threats on New York City and Washington, D.C. A person who understands and has done a great job and just back from a tour across this country and uh, clearly in his home state is Keith Ellison, who's representing uh, the Progressive Caucus. Keith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, from the Progressive Caucus standpoint, we just want to say that we stand with our caucus on making jobs first. Stand with the president saying jobs must be the issue, should have been the issue a long time ago. Very glad that it is front and center on a, because it's been front and center in the American people's mind for quite a long while. So we're going to be forcing this issue of jobs now. Uh, we're going to be standing shoulder to shoulder with our colleagues. And I just want to ask you all to just consider what life might be like for you, having been out of work for maybe a year, 18 months, two years. Your skills would start to deteriorate. They'd have machines on your old job that you might not know how to operate. You might get rusty at the work you did before. Maybe you'll even go through an ad that says only the employed need apply for the job that you're looking for. Right now, the unemployed are facing discrimination because they are unemployed. Your kids are looking at you in a way that you're not sure that they're as proud of you as they used to be when you used to charge out that door in the morning and put food on the table. Maybe your unemployment's run out. The fact is, Americans are in a desperate situation, 14 million of them. And a couple of generations ago, our government stepped up and met the needs of unemployed Americans. We did it with the WPA, the CCC, and a whole range of other things. It is the role of government to work with the private sector to make sure Americans and the, are, are working and the economy is working. And I think this generation cannot do any less. Speaking generationally, it was just a generation ago that President Eisenhower said, you know, we need to have infrastructure all over this country and responded to the needs of our nation at that time. We're still driving around on our grandparents' infrastructure. So in America, we need to make some investment. We need to make it today. we got to get our economy moving, and the, this is a great place to start. And we look forward as the CPC, the Progressive Caucus, standing with our colleagues, making jobs number one. Thank you, Keith. And uh, with that, um, we have a caucus at 915, but we'll entertain a couple of uh, uh, questions. Well, if you've, uh, you haven't been to a Democratic uh, uh, caucus, I'm sure, but uh, they can expect every question imagined <laughs> under the uh, sun, and Gene Sperling will be heading up the uh, Washington uh, economic team. He'll be here. Yes. What is Keith Ellison's qualification and how does he see I think he's doing the right, balanced approach. As the President said throughout, these are proposals that are not new. These are proposals that both Democrats and Republicans have embraced. He has uh, uh, been so dogged about the fact that he's going to rather, whether, whatever it takes, he's going to bring this country together and points that out bipartisanly that these things have been embraced and went to great lengths to demonstrate Republicans that have proposed a number of the alternatives as well as, as, well as Democrats. So there's nothing in there that uh, couldn't be taken up and passed immediately. And that's the bottom line here is that we need to act now not on, you know, not wait for 14 months, not, you know, drag the leg, so to speak, dead leg this whole process into a presidential election. It's the public also, what you heard when you're home, a pox on both your houses, 
end running for office, put us back to work. That's the only thing that the American people are focused on right now. Put us back to work. He's going to we're stimulating the economy by both investing in the infrastructure and you can make cuts. The National Journal came out with, uh, you know, 11 separate ways that you could put the country back to work without even impacting the deficit one iota. There has to be a commitment to jobs. And I think, as the president said last evening, there's short term and long term visions that have to be embraced as well. And even more that has to be done. You heard Keith talk about the need for investment. The National Journal again, to go to a nonpartisan source, said there are 18 ways to make strategic investments to grow this economy. The question becomes this. Do you want to grow the economy and put America back to work, or are you going to dead leg a process where nothing gets done in Washington, D.C., and it continues to be a partisan morass? Or do you take what this man has said in a bipartisan fashion and bring it up now and vote on it? And that's what we ought to do. Yes. postpone? Tell the 14 million people out there that need jobs what we have to postpone. That was the message last night. 14 million Americans turning to their government. The president was clear. Government can't do it all, but we sure as can help. You're, I'm out of work, and I'm going to tell you, that, again, I have to go back home and say, well, geez, you know, what we thought we'd do is postpone that. The public perceives that as kicking the can down the road and not stepping up. He's got a plan. He's laid it out there. What is the problem with voting it up or down? Well, what, will we have to stay in a little bit longer? We only have 40 legis- less than uh, 40 legislative days left before December 23rd, and that being the date for the uh, uh, select committee uh, to make its final vote up or down on its decisions. So the time to act is now the president's right. And uh, he may have to go all around the country, as I'm sure he will, to make this case to the people. Infrastructure. Take it right to the floor tomorrow. Bring the infrastructure bills to the floor that the president has recommended Put us to work right away. Get those construction workers out there. Everybody travels back in their district. You heard Rick and Keith both talk about it. The light turned off at the end of the tunnel. Bridges that have been that are in desperate need of repair. A whole East Coast that has been ravaged by disaster. Put the people back to work. We came up with the we suggested the other day a community revitalization corps that would come out there in response to uh, what just transpired with these storms. Put them back to work. You don't have to create a new bureaucracy. Have FEMA work with them. Have the Ag Department work with them. Have Homeland Security work with them. Put our youth back to work. But it's time to put America back to work. Stop the excuses. Take a vote, up or down. Thank you.